thank you so much for coming and watching this channel today is one of those happy moments or happy day for me today is December 10 2017 because 10 years ago something really amazing a life-changing experience happened to me I was in a different city called Sioux City Iowa and at 5 a.m. on December 10, 2007, the ICE officers came all the way from Newark, New Jersey, and knocked on my door and moved me to Michigan. Let me tell you a little bit of the, the background story. So back in 2003, I was in West Africa, Togo specifically, and I was 13, and I was trafficked into the, the U.S., not sexually trafficked, but labor traffic basically i worked as a hair braider for about two years i worked all kinds of hours crazy hours maybe 8 to 2 a.m no off days no holidays i worked all kinds of crazy hours and after i started asking that i wanted to go back to school i was considered the stubborn child the bad finger the bad apple of the family and i was returned back to togo that was in 2005. So after almost two years, I was returned back. And La has happened, and then I came back to the U.S. Now in 2007, fast forward, I have two kids, and here my traffickers got arrested. Then the ICE officers also know that someone was missing, which was me, and they came and got me all the way in Iowa and brought me to Grand Rapids, Michigan, to be in foster home. The first foster home where I was in, was really hard because these young couples aged 27, 28, just receive a foster child. That foster child, me, has two children. I was basically playing a wife to someone that is much older than me. And then all of a sudden, I'm someone's child. The transition did not go good. Then after about nine, 10 days later, they moved me finally to Grand Rapids, Michigan, to a different foster home. That did not go good. This person was basically doing it for the money. She complains all the time about the organization not sending them money on time. She complains all the time. And when the caseworkers is coming, man, the house is clean. Everyone is talking to you. They're doing your laundry and folding your laundry in front of the caseworker, holding your children and babysitting. No complaining or anything. When a caseworker leaves, then things go back to disaster, chaos. Then I started going to school in 2008. Notice I haven't been in school since 2003. Basically, 2000, yeah, 2003, I haven't been in school. And now all of a sudden, I'm in high school. I missed my middle school and junior high. Now I'm in high school at 18. It was hard, but I was able to get done. But before that, when I was in a foster home, things were just now going really good when I turned 18. I moved back with the kid's father, and things were really bad. I had to move out again. Then I moved into this one lady's house. I cleaned, and babysit, and go to school, and come back, and babysit, and clean. But she was just never pleased. I paid rent, and I lived under in her basement with no door. My clothes were just there. I had one mattress on the floor where the kids sleep in, and I would put one, one bed sheet on the floor, and then I would sleep on it. Later on, I find my own place, and in 2010, I received my high school diploma, willing to please my dad and accomplish what, what goal that he wanted me to have, I guess, going to school and becoming a doctor. I followed that dream, going to school to become a doctor. After two years or a year and a half, it didn't go really good, so I switched to business, took a few business classes, which later helped me to store my own hair salon, which I still have. It's still small couple chairs but it's mine and it's good and all that time I still feel like I was pleasing my parents my mom wanted me to be a business owner my dad wanted me to be a doctor both didn't go really good I'm still a business woman but it is I think it's not my gift and during this time in my life there are a lot of people that have been helping one of them was Mrs. Halle Verink. That woman was there for me 
for a long time and her soul rest in peace. And then I have met other people and I've met this lady called Sarah Van Lynn. This lady has done a lot that I don't think I've met anybody in my life that stuck with me and my problems for this long. But she has been there. Like taking the kids when I'm when I'm feeling a little bit down, taking the kids so I can finish my exam in college or anything like that, taking the kids for almost a week or a week long vacation, doing everything, Christmas gift that no one has ever given me, giving me gifts and things that I didn't even know that anyone loved me enough to even offer. One of the other hardest things is uh, finally talking to my kids about how I've been living and everything else. Of course, they've been with me the last 10 years. I've been raising them by myself, and they know that their mother is a strong single mother, a strong, brave woman that will fight to them, fight for them till her death. But I didn't tell them a lot of things. I just told them that I was, I came here when I was young. I didn't have my family. My life was hard. They know, but they just don't know too much. They know that they should treat women really good. They know things like that, but they don't understand the reason of being trafficked. And this year, 2017, I've made that this year a year where my kids knew more. And I started telling them a lot of things. I told them a lot of things, and I know that since then, they, they kind of look at me differently, which I didn't want them to look at me differently. I didn't want them to feel sorry or feel like they are part of the problem. If they, did, they were not born, probably, or be somewhere else, I told them to, I remind them all the time. I don't know any other life. So whether you guys were here in my life, in my life or not, I would I don't know where I would be, but I don't want you guys to think that you are the reason why I'm stuck this way. No, or that's the reason why I, st I stuck with your dad for too long. No, we had our own problem, and we still have our own problem, but it's, it doesn't have to be nothing with you. And they do ask me questions like, do you think you were raped? Do you think since you were not, you didn't agree to stay with him, were you raped and things like that? And th those are the hard questions that I, I have to answer. But I was ready this year to finally tell them more about it because if I don't tell them, somebody else is going to tell them something else that is going to make them and mad. And I don't know what it will do at that time. So it's better for me to tell them this time. It's not easy for me to talk to them about such things, especially when they ask you, Mom, did you think that my dad raped you? Do you think that or do, would you feel like you were... You were um, basically raped off your, or someone stole your childhood. I answer questions like that. Yeah, I felt like my childhood was stolen, and I felt like my teenage life was really stolen. But I also had to tell them that I still love them. If I don't love you, you won't be here. I love you enough to keep you. I love you so much that I don't know anything else to tell you right now, but I don't want you to feel like you're part of the problem. And that's one of the hardest conversations so that you have to tell someone. And besides my kids, my family also didn't know a lot that it was happening to me. There was a lot of things that I didn't want to say. They were just ashamed of, or I just feel like they would not believe me or anything. Or they just will say, oh, you know, we're Africans. You shouldn't just leave. You already have kids there. You should just stay and just hope that the man changes. So I kind of shoved a lot of things in. I didn't tell my parents. And this year, I started saying a lot. Last year, actually, I said a lot in 2016. But most of the time, I would blame my family for not listening to me at first when I tried to tell them. And this year, I basically used that as a way to just heal when I tell them the things that I have to go, I have gone through. And they do. They finally listen because I told them they didn't listen to me. They finally listen. But it's it's still really hard to kind of just say everything that I've gone through. I'm, I feel like I'm emotionally ready now to be talking about it than the way I used to. But... It's still a lot of work in progress, but then I still at the same time I don't use I don't let anyone use that against me to say that oh she's not emotionally fit. If I cry, I'm crying because because of something. It's not because I was trafficked ten years ago or fourteen years ago. I'm crying for something else. I don't want anybody to use that against me. Some people will use that against you. No matter what you tell them that you have accomplished, they will always bring your past back. Some people will hear me say things like, I'm going back to school to do this. And the next thing you know, they're asking you about your kid's father. They're asking you about your traffickers. Why are you asking me about that? That's like a long time ago. I just told you about my my future, what I'm going. And you're trying to ask me about what I've been. I will tell you what I've been 
when the time comes or if I want to talk about it. Now you trying to bring that into a conversation. Also, with everything that happened and me being young and being mature really fast than my, most people my age, it does intimidate people around me, my friends, especially men. I've met a lot of people, a lot of men that are way older than me and they feel really intimidated or they feel like I'm out of their league because of what I've been and me striving to be better. It is okay to let those people kind of go out of your life. If you're not ready for me, you're just not ready for me. You don't have to put me down or try to tell me to change, to fit in, into your expectation because I'm not going to. And somebody who's going to call me a stubborn person or somebody's going to tell me that I'm too independent. I've heard things like that. She's too independent. She's too strong. She's too brave. She's too this. She's too that in order to keep me down. But it's not going to keep me down because that's how I grew up. That's how I grew up. And in my family, most women that I know are strong women. I grew up around in very emotional men, but very strong women. So this is all I knew to be strong. But then at the same time, Things happened to me that added to that. And now, and now it just is overboard. But it's okay. Nothing is wrong with me emotionally. I've gone through my counseling moment and it helped. I've cried. I've break down. I still break down once in a while. But it doesn't mean that I'm, I'm stuck to my past. I'm not going to live in the past and keep crying about something and being mad and being angry at everybody else and showing it in my face, in my character, in everything I do. While the person that hurt me is sleeping at night peacefully. Now I'm here crying over something that happened 20 years ago, something that happened 30 years ago. Now it has happened. And by the time I was 17, I got saved from that. 10 years later, I'm 27 today. I haven't, I'm now where I want to be, but I'm really happy with where I am because a lot of things have changed and I've taken a lot of different roles in my life. I've fallen, I've made mistakes, I've learned from them, and I keep moving on. And now that I'm back to school, finally, I know what I want to do with my life. My purpose, I find my purpose through this. And I know that I really want to help other young women, other teenage moms and victims of human trafficking that finally got rescued and they don't know what to do with their life. I am here for them. That's the reason why I'm going back to school to get a degree in ministry, leadership, and hopefully one day have a place to call home for those people, those teen moms and those survivors of human trafficking. I hope this video helps you to get a little bit understanding about human trafficking and life after that and be able to help other people that have gone through that. If you are doing it because you want to help, do it. But if you are doing it because you want something to gossip about, I will suggest and I pray that your heart changes, your mind changes so you can find something else to do. Do not add a trouble to the person's trouble. I hope you do it because God has called you to do it because it is something that you feel called to, not because you want something to gossip with your girlfriends on the weekend. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope to see you back again in a different video. Thank you. Bye. There is only one